I'm no longer bound, I'm no longer chained, I'm no longer captive, no longer restrained, delivered, set free, and free to be me, let me introduce myself. Welcome to Be The Light with Pastor Zakia Robinson. In this show, we are speaking to Lady Kamika Shelley, and she tells us about her journey to Christ, and we also have a chance to talk about teen pregnancy faith and believing in God and so many other great topics. So if you want to tune into this show, please tune in because this is a show you're not going to want to miss. My name is Frida. Frida. All right. Welcome. Welcome everybody to be the light. I'm so excited as usual to do a um, interview about someone's journey to Christ. And the crazy thing is we just interviewed her husband, Pastor Shelley, which is there all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, y'all. So I don't take this lightly when people actually take it, take time out of their day to, to meet with me so that they can share their journey so it can help someone else who's viewing or who's watching or listening, someone who's currently going through something. And so I'm sure if you tuned into this show today, I'm sure it's because God have led you on here to hear. And so I want to welcome Lady Kamika Shelley here to the to the um, interview today. How are you? Hello. Hello. I am well. I'm excited. Excellent. Excellent. So as I already mentioned that you are from Atlanta, Georgia right now. That's where you're, you, you live. That's where your church is at. And um, you have five kids, a husband. How is that juggling when it comes to ministry and everything? Because I know your kids are a little older, but like, how is that for yeah. you? How is that? Well, actually, we have young adults now. There are no babies, no little kids, and life is amazing. <laughs> I want to thank <laughs> So is it what they say? Like, Because well, I know you have grandkids, too. They say it's, it's easier and better when you have your grandkids because you can send them back home. There you go. <laughs> that is all true. But I love my grandbabies. Yes. Um, my um. I would say my second, my second grandbaby, she is closer um, to us. And my, my first um, grandson, he lives in Houston, but my second grandbaby, she's here with us. So she spends majority of her time with us and it is amazing. And so my um, third grandbaby, she's just, she's, she's almost like two, two to three weeks old. So, wow. you know, we have a little bit more time, um, with her hopefully but definitely it is an experience and I love it I love it <laughs> I bet I love you do <laughs> I still have some years to go so um <laughs> yeah so I guess I just enjoy the journey <laughs> and so as we talking about yeah. journey bringing up journey let's talk about your journey like what was your journey like growing up well my um my family I would say we weren't um Christ Center or I did not grow up in church. Um, my great grandmother introduced me to church. However, I didn't spend a lot of time with her, but I can say my first memories of going to church was with her. And of course, when you're younger, um, that experience for, well, I'll just speak for myself. That experience for me was not good because it was hot. It was long. And that's <laughs> the only thing that I can remember staying at church all day. So, um, but I can, I can honestly say that she introduced me to, um, church. Um, However, as growing up, I I would say that my life was pretty much, uh, how would I say, um, normal, average. You know, I did not have or encounter a lot of difficulties or struggles that I really can can say were like just hard times. Right. Um, However, I could just recall it just throughout my life that I was always covered. I have always been um, needs met, you know, never had any type of extens extensive um, heart heartaches, heartbreaks or what have you. Um, but my introduction to Christ actually came about through a relationship, actually my relationship with my husband, um, his mom actually introduced us to Christ. Um, she wow. discipled us to Christ. So that was my, my basic introduction to um, knowing who Christ was. It was through her. About how old were you when you um, came to Christ? 
I was 15. 15. Wow. You know, the crazy thing is, is um, just looking at today's time and we look at these 15, 16, 17 year olds and then we compare ourselves to where we were at. Like they're so much farther from God than we were um, just because we don't have a lot of grandparents, you know, because typically what we hear a lot is like grandparents bring in the taking the kids to church and and, then that's how they came. But for you, you had your it was your boyfriend at the time. (laughs) His mom had introduced you into into uh, the church. And so how was that experience just fresh with it? It's it's new. Was it an easy transition? Was it some things that you struggled with when it came to trying to make that transition transition over to God? No, I can't. I can say that it was not hard. Um, I can say one of the biggest thing and one of the biggest things and the influence and the impact that she made was creating a community. Mm-hmm. She created a, a community, an outlet, a, a, a atmosphere, she cre- created an environment whereby we as young as, you know, teenagers, because it was a handful of us. It was like, you know, we all gravitated and we we gravitated to her. Um, just through the community, it was very, very easy. It was very, very natural for us to, to, you know, transition from, you know, our worldly life to our, um, godly life. So she was very, very intricate in that transition. And like I say, she just created a, a, an environment whereby we felt safe and, we were not, um, I would say, uh, how, how, how would I say, like, we weren't, um, suffocated. She didn't make us feel suffocated. Like she was throwing something on us. And I know that has a lot to do with, um, leading us and guiding us and just, you know, preparing our hearts for the things that he desired to do in us. So it was not, uh, uh, a, a situation whereby it was forceful. It was very, very easy. It was very, very, um, just open and it 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 it, it was an awesome experience for me okay so i want to ask you what was one of the things that was like you hit rock bottom okay like you walk in this walk with christ and you're like you know what everything's going good smooth selling but okay i just took a step back and now i have to get back i always say get back on the wagon okay just gotta get back on the wagon because i had fallen off a little bit what was that like for you Well, all of us go through those moments. Um, Just want to, you know, really, really highlight that there's no one that I that I don't know that hasn't faced a moment, a crucial moment in their life where they have felt disconnected or or they felt like um, they are not where they need to be in Christ. So I would definitely say um, those moments came you know, throughout my journey, not one particular moment um, that that I could say um, that was a, just a def- well, I can't I have several defining moments. Let me just say that mm-hmm. um, the most hurtful experience that I can say affected me and impacted my walk with Christ was um my daughter, my my very my my very first child, um, her name is Blessing Shelly, and we went through a season of our lives, and this is when, um, well after I was married, um, and we had started our church um, during that time. Um, I, I I I know Christ. I I you know I I love Him, and I'm very very involved you know in ministry, but there was the attack on my family, um, meaning my daughter, that um, she began to battle with her identity um, and spirit of perversion uh, was really, really, really strong on her life. And um, during that time, it was just very, very hard for me to understand what was going on. And so I do believe that I took on uh, the spirit of unforgiveness and and there were things that were really, really taking place in my heart that I I, I wasn't aware of, but it was drawing me away from um, drawing me away from Christ and trusting him throughout that process. So um, that was a very, very 
defining moment in my relationship with Christ and my relationship with others because I I, I, com I completely withdrew myself um, from I would not say, you know, like going to church, I was going, I was going through the motions, but I really was, my heart was, was just hurting and I wasn't um, really able, you know, to really commit myself in ways to God that I had once, I had once did. So, so that was very, very good. So after you went through that and realized that, okay, these trials are starting to hit, but it's not just affecting me. It's, a, it's trying to attack my child. And, you know, the crazy thing is, is that you hear a lot of pastors, a lot of people who's walking right with God. It's like the attacks come on the kids because we are strong now. It's hard for them to get to us. So what's the next best thing to us is our children. And so they start mm -hmm. trying to open up these doors. And then unfortunately, sometimes our kids take the bait, open up themselves to that. And now it's keeping us on our hands and knees praying for them. But at the same time, it's like, God, how could you let this happen? Like I'm here and this I'm, I'm speaking right. from um, experience. OK, just from right. what I would what I was saying to God was, God, I'm serving you. I'm in church. I pray. I fast. I'm reading my word. I'm, I'm drawing people to Christ. So why is my child like this? You know, because I have a, an older son, too, that he's 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 doing his own little thing. And it's like, OK, God, you know, I went through a season of like, how? Like, how could this happen? Yeah. But um, it yeah. also it caused me to get closer to God. So do you think this caused you to get closer to God, more intimate with God when you were facing this? Um, I know that the purpose for the trial was for me to get closer to God. Um, but I would say truly that I withdrew. I withdrew. I, I, I really went into a um, a shell. I really um, began to disconnect myself from the from him as my source. Um, and I did that in ways that were um, not you see what I'm saying like not really, really, you could not identify this with your with, you know, just by what you saw, because, hey, I was going to church. I was on the praise team. I was doing women's ministry. I was doing all the things that, you know, I was supposed to do responsible, you know, as upholding my responsibilities and the face of, you know, the right. the first lady of church or what have you. But truly, truly, my heart began to disconnect from God because I began to I allow anger, you know, and anger really, you know, which festered into the unforgiveness, unforgiveness um, uh, rolling over, you know, to my children and then ultimately to God because, you know, like, wait a minute, like, no, I should not be going through this, God, because I have really given my life to you, like, really. And just not understanding what was going on. Like I was, I was oblivious to what was going on. So I just, I didn't, I didn't allow myself to um, find comfort in the word of God or um, allow him to, you know, like embrace me. I was so, I began to get so hardened so this, um, that um, I really was. I was just going to ask a quick yeah, question why, why you were saying that. Well, well, how did you overcome that? Like, how did you say, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to get back. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to push through. Like, what was it for you that got you back to right with God from that situation? Well, I would say that, um, number one, acknowledging. I thank God for the for the grace of the Holy Spirit. I thank God for um, him not forsaking me, um, even, at, you know, when I wanted nothing to really do with him. I really thank him for not forsaking me. And I, I think because there was still a cry in me, a cry that wanted, you know, to understand, a cry that wanted to um, be free, um, a cry that was always, you know, praying for answers or praying for understanding. Um, I, I do believe that that allow the Holy Spirit to work in my heart to show me me, you know, to show me who I was in the in that time and in those moments. And so through acknowledging by the aid of the Holy Spirit, seeing myself and seeing that, hey, the problem is not, you know, with your child. The problem is not with God. The problem is really, really in you and what's going on in your heart and what you are allowing um, to take place in your heart. Um accepting that 
began the road, you know, to freedom and deliverance, you know, just seeing myself, you know, like the prodigal son, how um, the Bible says that, you know, it wasn't until he came to himself that he understood, like, wait a minute, you feel me? Like things are better at home. I need to, I need to return. And so it was almost like um, coming to myself, like seeing, okay, the state that I was in um, and deciding, okay, we have to make some changes and now we have to we have to forgive. We, we really, really have to work on our forgiveness and letting go. And yes, so I yes. believe throughout those um, those lessons, that experience. And this is something that is not a, a one a one time thing. You know what I mean? This this happens all the time, you know, like I'm still um, uncovering areas of unforgiveness that God wants to work through me in um, that results from those seeds that were sown all those many years ago. So um, I believe it's just really being open to seeing what God is showing you about you and then having the humility to say, OK, God, this is me and now I need your help. So yeah, I was that just, that's you know, was, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I was literally just um, teaching um, a group of people, and I was just saying that you have to first you have to check yourself. Like, okay, God, what is it right now that you're telling me I need to fix? Because obviously, I see the situation. I can't control it. It's here. And so, what is it that I need to right. learn from this? Okay. And then once I learn mm -hmm. from it, what do you want me to do about it? Because um, a lot of times, especially yeah. when it comes to our babies and our kids, it's like, we just want to put our hands in it <laughs> and fix it. But um, it's the same with us. Like, we, we are God's we kids. Stop. We want to stop their pain. Right. We want to stop right. it because we see it's a spiritual battle, but they don't see it. And so it's like, that's how God sees us. He sees us like, this is my child too. Their reminds first. I'm going to see you through this. You know, I need you to work on yourself, your emotions. You know, now you notice when someone's messed one of your kids, you begin to have unforgiveness. So now you need to work on that. And so it's like he begins yeah. to un um, he begins to reveal things to us about ourselves. And I had to get to a place in my life, too, where. I mean, I remember I was literally in my, uh, I think I was just in my living room and I was like, God, I can't do this anymore. Like, I can't worry about my son. I can't, I can't sit here, worry about him going to hell. I can't worry about these things anymore. And I was like yeah. warfare praying. And I'm pretty sure the people, if they walked past my door, probably thought I was in it with a whole fight <laughs> because I was like, <laughs> I, I was like full force with this thing. And I was like, I take my kids yeah. back from the devil and God, I'm handing them over into your hands. And when I did that, I felt a relief. Like, like something just came off and then I was just like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. And, you know, I don't care if it takes five years, 10 years, like God, you know, time is chopping. So I just know that your word's going to come to pass, <laughs> but we don't get to pick and choose what the battles are for them. Um, when you um, yeah. was going through this, was there in particular scripture that you were standing on? Was there something that like a book that you read? What was it that helped you help guide you? Was it just the word of God? What was it for you? Well, the, the scripture that um, my favorite scripture, um, and I believe I stood on this because I was um, the one that was searching for understanding. I didn't understand what was going on. So um, Colossians 1 and 9, where Paul is, is speaking um, to the church and he's telling them that, you know, my prayer for you is that you will um, possess spiritual wisdom um, in all that you would possess wisdom in all spiritual understanding. So it was, you know, Lord, I need to know how to maneuver through this situation as well as other situations with your wisdom and your, your understanding, because, you know, the word of God tells us that his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. So I needed to grasp his understanding, his perspective on what I was going through. And I believe that, through that process, God guided me and he showed me, OK, what to do and how to do it. He also brought people into my life that could also give me sound wisdom. Um, let me know, you know, when I was being too irrational or emotional in um, handling 
you know, my trials or, you know, responding or what have you. So he really um, provided me with the wisdom and the grace to navigate through that season of my life. And I also continue to ask for that and seek that throughout all, you know, I everything that I do. Lord, I need your perspective. I need to see this the way that you see this. And for me, that has helped me. That's helped me throughout, you know, my 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 life. OK, I wanted to um, get into your your role um, of being a first lady, because we know that the first lady means she's going to take some hits. <laughs> you know, you're going to feel the, the stressful moments, the good moments. You know, you're going to feel it all. So how is that for you when it when it comes to your ministry and what God have for you and your husband? Well, the role that I possess, I thank God for his grace, um, because um, Proverbs 31 woman, um, you know, it talks about all of these things that she is um, responsible for, the things that she does. And, the, you know, um, but it 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 does not really touch on the grace that she has through help. You understand through God bringing people in her life to help her um, do the things that she's doing. So she's not really doing these things alone. She's not really, you know, faced with these challenges alone, but she has help. Mm -hmm. And that's the one of the things that I thank God for that he has given me help. <laughs> he has provided me help. No, seriously, like to take some of that is, load off of you. This is <laughs> Listen, listen. Now, there are some things that, you know, you're just responsible for. Like I was responsible for my home. I was responsible to cook dinner for my family. I was responsible for their rearing. You understand? But when it comes to the extracurricular things, yes. you know, <laughs> hey, this thing in ministry, people coming alongside you, you know, upholding the weight of the assignment, you know, prayer, even people praying for you. I don't think we really um, give much credit to the intercessors and the people that are um, connected to our lives that really pray for us, yes. you know, or just, you know, um, takes takes take different loads of responsibility off of us. So. Yeah, I'm a first lady. I thank God for his grace. Um, there are things that I am responsible for. Um, and I've been able to navigate that through um, the help that God has really graced me and Pastor Shelley with. So, yeah, no it has, it, yeah. I'm not going to say it's not been hard at times, but I know there it could be a lot worse if right. we did not have, you know, the 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 help that we have. Right. And I'm about to say a lot of people, they have to realize that um, people who are is running like running like in charge, you know, the head <laughs> of everything and have to take the fall for stuff like we have to help. Like it's OK if you got to sweep yeah. the floor. <laughs> it's OK if you got to straighten up the pews, you know. But the thing is, is we are all called to something. And regardless of how small it is, how big it is, we have to start somewhere. If you don't even know where to start. Just ask, where do you need me to fit in at? Where, where is it you need me to do for you? Um, because that was one thing before God put me and my husband in a position of pastoring now was I was just trying to find out what did you need help in? You know, until next thing you know, God began to show me like, this is what you're called to do. This is, you know, I have a plan for your life. But um, did you realize early on, like at the age of 15 and like up until now, like when did, did you realize like, OK, I'm called to be a pastor. I'm called to be a first lady. Like when did you was like realize that and was that something that you just accepted easily or was that something you was like, OK, God, we got to talk about this first. Well, you know, when my husband told me that he was going to start a church, number one, I said, OK, you can go. You can start your church. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was his church. You know, he, see, you know, hey, he didn't. It was, hey, this is what God told me to do. And this is what I'm going to do. I did not, you know, question what God would have him to do. However, I did not see myself in um, what God told him to do, you know, right. and I don't know, you know, if that was just me not, you know, really being aware of 
Well, I do. I know I, it was just, you know, a sense of me not being aware of who I was um, at the time in Christ or what have you. But definitely at 15, I had no idea that this would be the course for my life. Um, I was very, very content with, you know, just serving God, you know, just, you know, I, I didn't have big expectations like, um, hey, yeah, I'm 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 going to be this. I'm going to be that or I'm going, you know, that that right. wasn't my um that wasn't my pursuit. That wasn't my heart. I was just trying to serve God, you know, just trying to live holy. Um, that was the main thing um, and please him. But no, I did not at all um, really fathom the direction of my life. Um, but when my husband told me that he was going to start a church. Um, I, there was a sense of humility um, that I that I walked in, you know, with assisting him and undergirding him and supporting him and what God called him to do. Now, throughout the process, yes, there, there have been things that I have discovered about myself that now I can, you know, say, okay, God has graced me to do this. So God has anointed me to do that. Um, and it has come through the servant aspect it has come through the yielding um process it has come through um the obedience you know being obedient to god for him to reveal those things to me and so now my journey you know um in ministry is just God continuing to unfold to me, you know, like who I am and what he has called me to do. And I, I don't believe that 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 ever stops. You know, I'm always seeking. I'm always asking, Lord, direct me and show me what it is that you will have for me to do. Right. And, I, and you know what keeps hitting my spirit is to talk a little about teen pregnancy really quick, just because I know I was a mm -hmm. teen pregnant. I know that you also um, I believe you are as a teen because I remember hearing your husband speak about it. Yes. I've heard and I've heard his side mm -hmm. of the story. I want to know your side of the story on this. Like what what were you going through? What was you your feelings and emotions? Two sides of the story. <laughs> you know, it's always two sides. Yeah, he has his side. Yeah. And I, I you know, that's his perspective. I love it. You know, when I hear it, you know, and when he tells the story, it just, you know, makes my heart melt. But um, yeah, being being pregnant um at that at, at a, a very um early age, for me, I was surrounded by love and support. Wow. That made the transition and what was going on in my life so much easier. Um, my my husband, you know, my damn boyfriend at the time was very supportive. I th I believe that plays a big part in accepting, you know, um, the the. This, the the situation, you know, um, he was very supportive. His family was supportive. I was surrounded by so much love that I did not have time to focus on uh, or have a woe is me um, mentality or that my life was over. I was so engulfed with support, love, um, encouragement that, you know, my experience from experiences that I've heard um, was 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 different, and so welcoming my 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 baby girl into the world, it was joy. It was so much joy. Yes. It was you know, no, it was amazing for me that 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 part of my life. I believe I I grew closer to God. That was a very very. Um, hidden place, you know, like I was, I was hidden under God's wings, like He covered me mm -hmm. so much. And during that, that those nine months, that year, our my relationship with my my then my boyfriend at the time totally transitioned. And I believe that during that time, God was impregnating us, you know, even with purpose um, for the next stage of our calling. Um, so yeah, I, I thank God for his grace. I've always, um, I was sharing this with um, my husband yesterday. Um, he has us on an assignment to discover, you know, not, not just discover, but to, 
speak about and talk about the grace that God has placed on our lives and what has God called us to. And I was telling him, I was like, you know, God has, 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 has been so amazing. God has shown me so much grace and so much love that I, I do believe that covering is an assignment that he has placed on my life, you know, to cover, you know, because I received that, that, that same type of covering, um, making people feel, um, safe, making them, um, have it, having them experience the love of God, I do believe that that is very, very intricate into my role and what my um, my purpose is in life. Um, simply because that is so that is what I receive from God and what he placed in my life. Amen. And I want to piggyback on what you were saying about having someone that surrounded you with love um, when you were talking about how you went through the teen pregnancy, um, because I didn't have that. OK, I, I got oof, Lord. We, that's a whole that's a whole segment alone. But I felt like yeah. I was traumatized. <laughs> and so it's a blessing. And, you know, um, for those who's listening, maybe a teen right now that's pregnant and you're like, how am I going to tell the news? Like, how am I going to do this? Just know that your life is not over. Um, we all have made some wrong choices choices, wrong decisions, stepped outside of God's will, but we got back in the game with God. Like, okay, ask for forgiveness. Okay. Tell him, you you know, I know I've stepped outside. Can you, you know, forgive me for this? And then you just have to come mm -hmm. clean because we all have been to places. And then also, Lady mm -hmm. Shelley, I wanted to also ask you, um, with you being a first lady, right? How easy mm -hmm. is it to follow the plans of your husband? Hmm. Is it That's easy? Is it is it one of those things where you're like, mm, I have my own idea, you know, because sometimes we can have some strong characters, <laughs> you know, some strong like we be having plans of our own. I'm be honest. It's not always easy for me to just follow because mm -hmm. I want to know people who have a strong personality. And so um, mm -hmm. I wanted to get your input on that because I know there's many other women out here right now that is trying to follow the plans of their husband. But it's like, OK, God didn't tell me mm -hmm. that, like how, you know, just like about the church. Right. God didn't tell you, but he told him how. Mm -hmm. And obviously we heard how that went for you. But how is that now that you have yeah. grown in Christ? Now it's much better. <laughs> okay, you know, having started church, um, starting a church 20 years ago at the age of what, 20 and 21, you know, um, that in itself is, you know, just mind blowing, it's unfathomed, you know. However, during that time, I, I did not know who I was. I was not confident in you know my my who I was I was still learning who I was you understand um but having over the years through trial error and grace um accepting the 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 role that my husband plays in my life and also um his anointing and his grace and what he's been called to do um is 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 I'm much more accepting of that. I can separate um, my husband being my husband, my husband being my pastor, or my husband being the 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 shepherd of my soul. You understand, my husband being the the leader of my home. Um, I can ex I've accepted that, and I, I made you know tremendous transitions in you know understanding what that looks like because, like you said, yeah, we have our own um, identities and our own personalities, and we see our our own thoughts. We have our own thoughts and our own ideas. So, someone telling you, you know, hey, that may not be the best thing, or or you know, you may want to look at it this way, or hey, that's not what we're going to do. <laughs> you know, that's an out there. I have to go pray. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that can be, you know, that can be tough. But definitely, I have made a a, a good transition in understanding. Um, his role and his 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 role in my life and who he is to me. And so I'm more accepting of his direction. Hey man, I'm so glad you came on, Kamika, because, um, I, you. you know, it, it's a blessing that y'all took time, you know, to even come and speak. And I really hope that this show bless someone. If someone wanted to reach out to you um, just to ask questions or to get help, because I know y'all have different ministries within the church. Um, how can they reach out to you to, to um, speak with you? They can contact our office. Um, we're located at 1399 Austin Drive in Decatur, Georgia. Um, that's area code 30032. Um, our office number is 
1033. So they can directly contact us that way or visit our website, um, www.thehand.us. Um, there's an inquiry for a prayer. Um, if you want to contact us, we will definitely reach back out to you and make that connection happen. Um, and you can also follow us on Facebook Covenant Promises and Instagram Covenant Promises. So all of those ways are directly how you can reach us and, and we'll definitely reach back out to you. All right. Again, y'all, they are located in Atlanta. So if you're looking for a church, I'm telling you right now, this is the church to go to. Um, I wish I can come home more so that I can go. It feels like it's been forever <laughs> since I've been able to get there. To see you. <laughs> you Mr. Eric Pastors now. Yes. Congratulations. Glory to God. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. That's what I'm going to say to that. He stamped it. <laughs> but um, until next time, everyone, we look forward to um, hearing from you, seeing you. If you are looking for someone to help you with your inner healing or some life coaching, please don't hesitate to go to my website at be the light dot live. I am looking to help those that is in need. It's no, no, no need to carry around stuff that you've been dealing with since childhood let's get those inner healings and let's get on to the road of success all right be blessed and until next time we are out i'm no longer bound i'm no longer chained i'm no longer captive no longer restrained delivered set free and free to be me let me introduce myself thank you so much for tuning in to be the light if you are looking for a life coach or maybe you're looking for some inner healing, please visit be the light dot live. Again, that is be the light dot live. And you can also follow us on YouTube for a replay of this show at Zakia Robinson. Be blessed. My name